Hi, my name is Walter Charnerzan, and welcome to today's webinar. This is a conversation with uh, three gentlemen who represent three different areas of this sort of overarching technology that, that we call VR, AR, blockchain. Um, this is really a deep dive into what, what is possible, what is not hype, and what is not a story about what's coming down the road, but what is really truly possible uh, today. And I think that what you'll discover as we go forward is that our good friends at MobyDev have a very good um, handle on how the technology that is going to shape our immediate and long-term future is being uh, deployed today and what the potential is for its deployment going into the future. Hello, guys. I'm Andrew Makarov, leading engineer and VR solution architect at MobyDev. And MobiDev is a custom software development company which provides a variety of services, including augmented reality, blockchain, and machine learning. And today I'm going to talk about augmented reality. All of you have heard about augmented reality. It's really cool, hot, and trendy topic which evolves extremely fast. And today we are going to cover the most interesting and prospective solutions which can be used in your projects nowadays. So, Let's take a look at our agenda. First of all, we will start with positioning systems for AR navigation. Then we will talk about LiDAR and depth sensing. And finally, we will talk about empowering AR solutions with machine learning. So let's start. First thing that comes into our mind about uh, when we think about positioning is GPS and actually, uh, uh, and AR navigation is one of the most uh, imp like trendy uh, technology in, in augmented reality. And usually we distinguish three subtasks uh, in AR navigation, outdoor and indoor. And uh, we have three subtasks, positioning, routing, and rendering. In other words, first of all, we have to define user's location. Then we have to uh, build the route from the user's location to the destination point. And finally, we have to draw that route to the user. And what is the main problem here? It's precise positioning. And depending on the type of the navigation, outdoor and or indoor, the solutions will be different. Let's start with outdoor navigation. And as I said, when first thing when we think about navigation is GPS. And its accuracy is about 50 meters. Uh, like, yes, sometimes it can be more accurate, but all of you know how that blue dot is jumping around, especially in difficult conditions, like in between high rise buildings in downtown. That is why regular GPS can be applied only for some large scale uh, scenes. Like if you want to show an augmented reality mountains, lakes, or shopping malls, uh, their size give us some freedoms in, ter in terms of uh, accuracy. And also, maybe some of you have heard about dual band GPS, but it's too specific for now. For instance, some Android phones have it, or the latest Apple Watch Ultra have it. But as I said, it's just too specific. And typical GPS is not suitable for peer-to-peer -peer interaction. If we want to show exact and precise position, mutual positions between two users, it's not good for precise routing because uh, when we use augmented reality solutions, we want to uh, draw virtual content on top of the real world image. And uh, if our real coordinate and GPS coordinate doesn't correspond, it will look awful. And also it's not suitable for indoor navigation. Even dual band GPS will not be suitable for that. So is there any solution? Yes, and it's named VPS. VPS stands for Visual Positioning System. And it gives us much better accuracy, which is up one meter. And it enables a few like new scenarios like peer-to-peer -peer interaction or precise routing. So how does it work? Uh, using GPS, the system uh, gets approximate user location, uh, like with precision of regular GPS, and then uh, the system fetches information about the surrounding. And then 
system uses feature points on the buildings to refine users location. Uh, so it's a really cool technology which uh, like works impressively good, but it has its own drawbacks. It works only in some certain locations where Google for their AR core framework and Apple for their AR kit framework have prepared the data. In other words, they have scanned and mapped those locations. And as for indoor navigation, typically we talk about three ways of positioning. Uh, first thing that comes into our mind is beacons. Uh, so beacons are small Bluetooth devices which periodically emit a signal. And having multiple beacons in known locations, we can calculate user, user's position. But accuracy leaves a lot to be desired because beacons were not designed for that. They were designed for a bit different purpose, but it's quite convenient. So your users will receive a user experience similar to GPS when they just launch an app and see their location. But you have to consider that uh, uh, that system is quite expensive because you will have to spend money on beacons and itself and for the maintenance for batteries for workers who will replace those batteries and so on. And uh, you can apply such solution in large scale buildings because of accuracy. Second option is visual markers. I would say it's subsystem of VPS. Uh, so we place uh, special images called visual markers or AR markers in known locations and as soon as a user scan uh, that marker, we know their location. Uh, I would say that it is the most cost-effective way to build AR navigation solution. And it works best uh, for small scale buildings. And third option is VPS. So instead of set of visual markers, special images, we can use the whole environment as one big uh, visual footprint of, uh, of interior. Uh, but that solution is quite expensive in the development. Uh, and also you have to keep in mind that it's sensitive to interior changes. In other words, if you uh, change uh, something in your interior, most probably you will have to rescan uh, your environment. Also, there are some other solutions to define user location indoors, but they are too specific. For example, uh, UWB, which stands for ultra wideband, or Wi Fi RTT uh, round trip type, uh, but they are not market ready, I would say. So, uh, also, uh, LiDAR and depth sensing is really vital for AR solutions. LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging, and it's alternative uh, TOF sensor time of flight. Uh, they serve to uh, define uh, depth map. So uh, what is depth map and, and actually depth sensing? When we take photos, they are flat. They are not 3D. And uh, having LiDAR or TOF sensor, we can measure distance from the camera to any point on that image. It's still not a 3D scan yet, but that information uh, is extremely useful sometimes to uh, improve our AR experiences. So let's see how we can improve uh, our AR experiences. First of all, it uh, enables instant plate detection. So if you have tried AR solutions before, maybe you notice that you have to move your font around to let it scan the environment, to scan the floor, or maybe walls, to place an object. With LiDAR, it works almost instantly. And it also provides better quality and accuracy, uh, higher precision. And also with LiDAR, you can get uh, mesh. Mesh, it's uh, raw geometry of the environment. And uh, you can do really interesting things with it. For instance, you can use that mesh to provide more immersive user experiences, like occluding. Here we see our AR cat and how it would look like without occluding. So we see virtual cat and real sofa, and we use mesh of that sofa to cut out uh, like part of the cat that shouldn't be visible to users. 
also you can empower your ER solutions using machine learning. So during ER session, we get different types of data which can be used as an input for machine learning models. And that data is image data, depth data, and sound, the sound data and motion. Let's take a look how we can use each of type uh, more closely. First of all, we can use image data for object labeling and tracking. So in other words, we can implement solution uh, which will mark some objects in our real life. We can implement detect defection application, which will uh, analyze image, find detect, and will highlight them to us. Uh, we can implement face recognition solutions and draw some kind of personalized content on top of uh, uh, humans' faces. We can implement OCR and live translation solutions where text is detected, translated and drawn on top of the real world image. We also can use pose estimation and uh, for instance, draw virtual avatar instead of a real user. And we can use body segmentation. For instance, also for content occluding, like previously we talked about content occluding using depth data. And also we can uh, occlude content using uh, segmentation. Using depth data, we can, uh, for instance, implement 3D scanning apps and use those 3D scans later. Or we can, for instance, automatically measure objects, let it be your baggage and check if it fits uh, to airline company limits. Also, we can use depth data to perform liveness check and tell about humans and photos and so on. Um, also, we can use motion data, for instance, to classify motion and automatically switch uh, our user experiences from walking to transport AR sessions. And we can, uh, uh, we can implement our custom tracking solutions. Like for instance, my team have implemented solution for AR session during uh, flight. Uh, and as a quintessence of the technology, I suggest to take a look at how Apple have combined those technologies together in their framework room plan. So they used here depth sensing to reconstruct the room, like we see here. They use automatic measurements to measure room automatically. They use object detection and labeling. So you can, as you can see here, we uh, detect uh, pieces of furniture, doors, windows, and so on. So let's take a look at the video. As for me, it works like magic. <laughs> 